How would we do that? Good sir. I'm just going to start telling you things and Andy's going to kind of keep driving at the same time and we'll just see how it works out. And as with uh, you would expect with developer snapshots, uh, things might not work so perfectly in here. Uh, this is not done in terms of alpha at even. This is uh, the reason that we're, we're comfortable releasing this in the way that we are is we believe that everything in here is going to stay. And uh, if you've uh, never worked for me, you have never had the enjoyment of me throwing your work out. But uh, as, as Andy or anyone will attest, that happens a lot here. We try out a lot of ideas and some of them are good and some of them just can't stick to the wall. And so um, I think the best analogy I was able to come up for it with was it's a little bit like songwriting. You really don't want to watch someone do it. Uh, so we just kind of quietly go to our bedroom and strum on our guitars. And now, you know, this is us showing up at jam practice letting you know, hey guys, I think I might have a song here. So you'll have to forgive us if uh, there's no bridge and the chorus sucks. Um, so, that being said, the editing UI has completely changed. Um, we threw out in-context editing, it's all forms now. Um, <laughs> but we reskinned the... takes you to the back. All of them. All of them. We reskinned the, uh, the basic toolbar to just be way... Um, less chunky, a little bit uh, lighter and uh, uh, more minimal. And I know uh, we're going to get uh, pushed back on the lack of labels, but I feel like if you just roll over them and tinker with it a bit, you'll start to pretty quickly see what everything does except for that plus. Um, and uh, it's attractive and simple and less stuff yelling at you. Um, so let's just go ahead and do some edits on the page. You put the page in edit mode, same way you did before. And now you can see as we're rolling over blocks, um, you know, the highlighting is much more subdued. We don't put dotted red lines around things, which means we're not moving stuff around within the layout. Uh, before, there was slight kind of one pixel moves here or there, and uncomplicated things that really messed with stuff. Now, uh, it's much more subtle. So that's an area he was rolling over a second ago with a little tab. Above it is a block with the green. And if he just clicks and edits this text, you say edit block, Boom, he's got Redactor right in the page as he scrolls down the toolbar marries to the top of the browser and he can just type. Look at him typing. Isn't that beautiful? Um, Redactor is nice and clean, produces great code and you just saved it and that's super. Um, adding blocks has changed uh, significantly as well. So. Um, if I wanted to add a block, I could click that tab and add it to a specific area, as you always have been in the past. But uh, you can also just click this plus guy and add a block that way. Uh, in fact, you can click the plus before you even put the page in edit mode, and you'll see Andy can just drag one of these guys to wherever he wants it. You can put it at the top of the block area, you can put it at the bottom, put it in between some blocks. Um, we did that because we saw, frankly, a lot of the competition doing that. Someone comes to their page and they want to add something. That's what they're thinking. I really need a photo gallery on this page. They're not thinking, I really want to put this page in edit mode. Uh, and so we thought by just having a simple plus icon, that might connect with, uh, with folks who are trying to explore what they could do with their site. What more, and by more I mean plus, could I do on this page? So. Uh, yeah, as I say, clicking plus puts you in edit mode, gives you that block overlay thing, which now had, as you saw, tabs. So blocks are um, organized, navigation blocks, form blocks, and uh, these categories will map to our marketplace. Uh, and so you'll have, um, and of course we'll, we'll build in the ability to browse marketplace and that kind of stuff gracefully from here. Um, so, you know, just a little bit better than the, uh, the huge flat list of doom. Um, what else I want to say on that stuff? Yeah, you got the plus in the editing bar, and that's uh, mostly makes sense. Um, the redactor, we got through that. You want to do layouts next? Sure. Next thing we can show you is we've completely rebuilt layouts uh, from the bottom up. So if you add a layout to a block area, uh, you can see again you've got this kind of in page toolbar that you can use for some blocks. You know, we use this in a couple of places, we can talk more about it. Um, but your layouts can work in one of two ways. Uh, they can be a freeform layout, which Andy is doing now. So this is kind of similar to what we had before, um, where you can just say, I want three columns, I want to drag them right here, and that's what I want. Uh, it's much better than what we had before because there's actually a hierarchy being built. Uh, so the permissions for these areas actually inherit from the parent area. Um, 
I know like good, good kind of developery things that, that everyone should be happy about. Uh, alternatively, if there is a CSS grid framework built into your theme using a new standard we have developed and probably not documented yet, um, you can actually limit those uh, layout choices to preset columns. And this may not be something we can show at the moment. Yeah, I don't if know. I nuke this and install the booster app thing, like. Yeah, so we're, we're dealing with themes that we probably will strip from 5.7 anyways, but um, if we had a theme that had the, uh, the bootstrap columns built in, you'd bring that up, you could choose freeform layout, or you could choose to keep it on bootstrap, and then it just lets you choose how many columns, and everything will automatically align as you would like it to, to do. Yeah, it's a different option in here, and then uh, your theme itself can document what areas, uh, how many columns are available in an area, um, since it's probably not the full column with the available. Um, and then your theme can document its classes and you will use, it will snap to the grids with, and use booster, uh, you know, use your grids classes like span one, span two, and even the offset classes as well as you make multiple, uh, as you make multiple uh, you know, columns have bigger and more smaller spaces between them. Uh, few things that I can just rattle off that you're not gonna have anything to show about, so do whatever you want, Andy. Uh, we've rebuilt single sign-on, uh, or the authentication layer, rather, to handle single sign-on in a better way. Uh, the front end for it is not really finalized, but the way of dealing with it on the back end certainly is. So I believe we have Facebook and Twitter working, but um, I'm sure there's any number of other authentication sources that uh, people might want to sink their teeth into. Um, my, the my account area is being completely rethought, and I don't think there's much to show there. Out of everything that we have, that's probably the least mature at the moment, yeah. uh, at least in my mind. But th there's still opportunities for, for me to pull the plug on some of the ideas there, or throw in last minute ones. Um, but basically trying to deal with uh, people building communities and uh, make it a little bit easier to add pages to a my account area. Yeah, okay, so some of that stuff is pretty solid. Um, uh, not that solid, uh, um, uh, but you know, can I? We've got a new idea called relationships, which can be typed, so you can start to build sites that have um, uh, Twitter one-way follows versus Facebook two-way follows, that kind of thing. Um, some of the bones for that exist, but the kind of the experience and UI need to be flushed out. Uh, that's next on my list of things to worry about. Uh, mobile is going to be a thing that we worry about done right now, but the intention is as you uh, bring the side in, the toolbar, well, maybe it does now, but I don't no, think it does. Okay. Yeah, the, the toolbar will collapse nicely, and uh, you know, you'll get, it doesn't, it's not going to be the prettiest thing on earth, but you'll get a, a, a usable, elegant toolbar on a, uh, uh, just in a responsive way. Um, yeah, we used to, in 5.6, we tweaked mobile so that if your site uses a specific mobile theme, we we use different CSS on the bar, so thinking that you know it, it would collapse and not the buttons wouldn't overrun the bar, but there's really no reason to do it that way. It should just the bar should just be responsive. And, uh, yeah, bar should just be responsive. We are also we've uh, as as it is hip to do these days slipped into the business of making mobile apps for our favorite client. So um, we expect not with five seven, but possibly with five seven one or five seven two. Uh, to be launching a iOS and Android Concrete 5 app that lets you contribute content back to your site in cool ways that we'll get to in a second here. Um, we are going to be reskinning all the blocks as well. You saw the block add interface. We haven't reskinned any of the core blocks, but we've got some comps that we're chatting about here still. Uh, and I'm going to make a blog post about all this stuff, and I'll attach some screenshots to that. Um, Rethinking the file manager's layout, that kind of stuff. That'll include multi-file uploading, uh, which actually works in conversations. I don't know if there's anything there you want to show. Yeah, I think so. Uh, we have it's built... Look a little weird in this theme, but... A little punky, but we'll give it a shot. Um, we have built a new way of handling discussions into the core. So, historically, we've had the guest book that was a free block in the core that was very, very flat, attached to a page. It's guest book comments. And we had a discussions add-on in a marketplace that um, handled handled uh, building forms by making every post a page, uh, and that made a lot of sense to us at the time. We thought it was super flex. It is super flexible. Uh, it is also you know that flexibility as as it always does comes at a cost, 
And, um, you know, after years of experience, we decided, you know, it might make sense just to have a table in the core for managing conversations and figure out ways to attach them in pages in different ways. Uh, so that's what conversations are. They're free, they're built into the core, and they're going to basically replace uh, guest book and forums in the, in the larger perspective. So I don't know if you want to show us what you got, Andy. So he's adding a conversations a, block. Which is basically a beefed up guest book block. And uh, this can be attached to a page. It can also be attached to other stuff. So you can have more than one of these on a page. If you want to do like a you know, pros and cons column, as I've seen some cool blogs do, you can do that kind of thing. And uh, yeah, you get a built-in redactor, which you can control potentially what options are available uh, in terms of formatting. Uh, yeah, styling's still kind of funky. Um, we're building in, basically we have to build functional parity to our, our own discussions add-on, but also our own um, Concrete5.org forums, because we intend to use this in a rebuild of Concrete5.org. So you see things already in here like best answer and promote, uh, things like that, that are not available in either one of our add-ons. Here's an awesome new multi-file attachment thing. We're going to be adding that to the file manager as well. Um, we are hooking into our spam trap layer now. Um, and all this stuff is, uh, do we have a dashboard page for it yet? Uh, yes, yeah, so we've got like centralized reporting on all the conversations that are happening as well. So now there's one spot you can go in your dashboard and uh, see all the conversations. Anything else you want to talk about with that? About uh, conversations? Yeah. Uh, no, no. All right. They're conversations. They're very powerful, very flexible. There's a lot to it. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Oh, there's a new image editor that's punky but worth showing. Uh, yeah, it, it is. I was having major trouble with this just a second ago. Oh, sweet. Okay. All right. Uh, so this, uh, as with many things here, the bones are solid. The experience is still being kind of uh, hashed out. Uh, but it's all JavaScript based and um, you know, if anything this thing sends is it's too powerful. You can add multiple objects. Ah, that's totally not working. Um, if you go to 5.7 stage it might. Uh, but you can add multiple objects, you can do text annotations, you can do little, you know, uh, there, there's like built in, uh, ganky, uh, there's, there's, um, built in imagery so you can, I mean, you can you can have a picture of you and do a text bubble and, and say how awesome this is uh, right within the image editor. Um, it kind of replaces, the intention is it will replace all the various image editors that we have for individual tasks. So um, you can use it with a fixed footprint if you're saying look upload your avatar. Uh, you can say well you know it's got to be 100 by 100 and just move the image around. Um, okay we're going to another stage see if it works here. Um, yeah, okay, it's a little bit better. Uh, you can rotate, crop, blah, blah, blah. No, maybe not. Uh, we even have built in a way of dealing with filters so you can get uh, straight Instagram-y on it and uh, and do that kind of thing because people love filters. Uh, oh, yeah, this should this should run fast. Uh, so yeah, that's that's there. Um, we're still tweaking the styles for the various edit windows and uh, see if the auto cross working great. Uh, working out bugs, obviously, and um, and then I think we're going to circle back around. Yeah, that looks better. Uh, and and kind of figure out are are we serving the base use cases well, um, or have we built something? I think today we have that is uh, more powerful than it needs to be and difficult for anyone to use. Uh, so we're gonna have to kind of scale back on that a little bit, but uh, very cool bones, and, and, and you know, certainly in terms of like the image editor is there, awfully exciting. Uh, let's get out of that. Uh, new core themes. We're working on new core themes again. I'll make some attachments to the blog post about this. But the intention with 5.7 is to yank all of the yogurt, and uh, you know, if you're upgrading, it's not gonna kill it. But on a new install, you're gonna get uh, three themes. You're going to have blank blank, which is going to be like a minimalist bootstrap white page, uh, some areas on it that you can subdivide. Uh, you're going to get river, which is a thing that we're pretty well done with. We're just kind of dialing in. That is, um, oh, fellas, this new trend of the, the non-scrolling photo in the background, with the boxes on top. 
Um, and then you're going to have something that's more text heavy. Uh, it seems like uh, a lot of our competition kind of ships with a uh, you know, just a hello world attractive uh, serify text thing. If you don't have a lot of imagery, but you just need like a, a, a quick quick page for an idea, that this would be the right theme for that. Uh, so those are in the works. Um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and I think we are to the big, oh, Composer 2.0. So let's do adding pages and then we'll do gathering. Uh, so it shows you edit a page. You may have noticed from that drop down, there's also now new page in drafts. Um, we always found the add a sub page thing to be counterintuitive as we were doing demos on Concrete 5. You show someone how easy ed in context editing is and they say, well, how do I add something new? And it's like, oh, uh, you go to where you want it first. And you know, sometimes you don't know where you want it. You just want to start writing a page. So you can click new page now. And that takes you to Composer, which is listing all of the available Composer types. And Composer, what are you calling them, Composer templates? Uh, types. Types. They've been pretty much rethought as well. So they are no longer a one-to-one -one relationship with page types. Um, you can have multiple Composer types for multiple page types. And uh, you know, really, I think the way we want you to start thinking of these is as a CRUD interface for making pages. So, um, and I feel like we did a demo on this at one point a month yeah. or two ago. I don't get too detailed on it. But, um, you know, long story short, we've got a page type and a blog type, and we've kind of chosen which attributes and uh, uh, blocks from areas we want to have in each one of those. And now when someone is ready to compose something new, uh, they simply make a choice under add page, yeah, new page, bloom, I want to make a whatever, a page, blog entry, doesn't matter, and um, start typing away. Um, we're still building some some ability to do tool tips in here so it can be a little more friendly and helpful. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if the, uh, I think we talked at some point about being able to change the, the either the composer types or the page types or both from here and have it you know, in a, in a bit more of a graphically pleasing way. Than yeah, 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 yeah. Expect these forms to get some love. Um, but, you know, you can right away, it'll save a draft as you go, and when you're ready, you can preview or publish, um, and uh, when you hit publish, you go and make a site. So there's a draft, works great. You improve the auto-saving stuff so you don't end up with a thousand drafts. Um, this is going to be awesome. This is going to be a more intuitive experience for people who are used to making content in a you know a WordPress type uh, centralized dashboard. It's also going to be a very handy tool for people who have a lot of content to migrate and you know a, a content team that they don't necessarily want to uh, to train on in context editing. Um, it's also super handy because we can use these composer forms as ways to build pages on the front end. And that segues pretty well, I think, to um, gathering. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah? So, uh, big thing that we've been uh, working on for a long time now is this idea of presenting content in a compelling grid that um, you want to curate. So we started by calling it the zine, then we called it the aggregator, and now we've settled on a gathering because what you're really doing is you're gathering disparate sources of data together uh, into one curated pile of attractive content. Uh, for me, my eyes opened up when I got, um, oh, they're still opening. Uh, I, I was uh, very turned on by Flipboard, the, um, uh, the iOS, uh, iPad app. Uh, I don't use it now because every time I run it, it wants to update. It takes forever. Uh, but I thought it was super cool because I could just point it to my Twitter feed and my Facebook feed, which I had grown very tired of looking at and it did some automatic magazining of it and just laid it out in a way that I found it compelling again. And I think that's magical. If you can take stuff that already existed and rearrange it in a way that people want to deal with it, uh, that's special. So we decided we wanted to do that too. And uh, that combined with the emerging trend of everything being in a flexible grid uh, brings you to the awesomeness that I'm wondering when Andy is going to drag it. There we go. Uh, all right, so here we are adding a gathering and uh, First thing you gotta do is you gotta pick some places you wanna pull content from. So this could be within your own site. So Andy's saying, I want, you know, go find stuff from this site and uh, limit it by blog entries and the controls there will get buffed out. Uh, you can also add an RSS feed. Uh, Andy likes his blog, so he's got a feed. Um, you can add a Flickr feed. And, uh, you know, in the big picture, you should be able to add lots and lots of, um, 
of, of these feeds and these are built in a nice modular way so we're hoping that we can get some help out of you guys for you know Twitters and Instagrams and all the various feeds. Uh, I can choose how many you want to spit out on a page and some positioning controls here that'll uh, make more sense and posting that we'll come back around to. But uh, if you like your sources, let's let's save this bad boy and see what happens. Do 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 do. All right. So uh, what's going on here is it has gone out and it's looking at Andy's blog, it's looking at this site, and it's looking at Flickr, and it's getting what data it can from each one of those posts, and it's doing its best to um, choose a size and a template for dealing with it. So you can see that one's kind of uh, four units big, and the other ones, you can think of those squares as a single unit. You can control all of this with CSS, of course. Um, but um, it's deciding that it wants to make that performance improvements one bigger. And as you hit load more, it does a fun job of uh, uh, filling in the grid. Uh, you say, well, that's awesome, but that's just kind of cute. What if I want to, uh, to curate this bad boy? Oh, your styles look great, dude. Yeah. Um, so you can grab the corner of any one of these guys and, uh, and drag them out and make them whatever size you like. So if I say, uh, yeah, drag him down, see what happens. Rink. Things move around. Uh, and what we're basically doing is we're saving your preferences for this tile. Uh, if you move it, we're trying to save your positioning preferences for it as well. Um, we're saying, we're, I'm calling them preferences and really meaning them as preferences, not settings. Um, if you've resized a tile to a certain size, it will always stay that size in subsequent loads. Uh, if you move a tile, we'll try to keep it kind of where you moved it. But the reality is we're pointing to three different feeds here. So there might be content above it, there might be content below it. We're just sorting it chronologically. There could be new content in between two things that you've moved. Uh, we're doing some fancy math to try to keep track of that and keep things where they should be. But it's really more of, of curating an organic magazine than a, a design layout tool. We wouldn't suggest that you um, think of this as a way to design your website. Although you can actually take any one of these tiles and turn it into a block that is fixed in time. You can promote this tile into a block uh, I don't know if this is working at the moment, but I've seen it work in the past where you can even drag it out to a different block area. Um, but we'll, we're thinking at this point we'll make it so you can copy it to a clipboard, put it on a different page, um, and, and Bob's your uncle. Um, each one of these tiles has different templates applied to it. So you see as Andy's been clicking over it, there's an overlay. Um, that's not the way that's supposed to work, incidentally. Uh, or supposed to look, at least. Um, but... Uh, if you go to edit tile template, there you go. So here you get a similar interface to the add block guy. Um, it's currently using the thumbnail template. Right, so what it's doing is it's looking at the content that it knows about this tile and saying, well, what do I have? I've got an image, I've got a title, I've got a short description. Uh, maybe I have you know, a, a, a time associated with this, whatever it might be. You know, Perhaps someone builds a, a feed to a calendar, a Google calendar. Perhaps someone builds a uh, and perhaps we build in a, a, a more handling of dates into pages. I expect we'll be doing that. Um, and then it, it, it gives you, it, it limits your list of what tiles it can use, what tile templates it can use to present this information. Uh, so, you know, if it's a YouTube video, there's obviously different choices than if it's a blog post. Um, in a similar vein, you can control what template it uses for overlay. So if I click on this thing, do you want me just to take it to the detail post? Do you want me to, uh, you know, show the first paragraph of the article of comments underneath it? Um, what do you want to have happen? So uh, all that is configurable as well. And you know, the expectation, or I think the, the the goal here, the use case that we're trying to design to is, um, imagine if you will that you are a business with a social media strategy, and you now have a Facebook page or two. Uh, you've got a Twitter feed or two. Um, you know, maybe you're super hip and you're doing Instagram and you got a Foursquare and all this stuff and then somehow you're supposed to build a, a press room on your website that brings that together. Well, get yourself the gathering block and uh, point all that in one spot and now you've got a compelling place to come read that. Uh, or, you know, another use case is you are uh, uh, you're passionate about mount mountain biking and you've got a great domain for running a mountain bike website but you don't have a dozen uh, authors ready to go write articles about mountain biking 
well, just go point it to the RSS feeds for your 10 favorite mountain bike magazines, and you're going to automatically have a magazine of your own. And uh, you could promote different page, different tiles that you like could get promoted into pages on your own site. And uh, next thing you know, you're just like Huffington Post. You've got a media empire based on other people's content. Oh, uh, yep, yep, yep. And then last but not least, maybe it's not last, but next in my mind, is you can actually create content from the gathering. So another example might be perhaps you're my kid's school and you've got a bunch of parents that are trying to communicate about stuff, uh, don't have a lot of time and, you know, um, email doesn't really work, so you can set up a gathering that summarized different pages in the site that were kind of built for different committees or worried about different things. And if someone's interested in one of them, they could they could contribute right from the gathering. So this could be a private page for my school site that's you know school issues. And if Andy turns on posting here, because we've made that composer template, uh, if he saves this bad boy. Uh, if I had access, I would be able to post right here, boom, I'm posting, uh, this is using the same composer template that we use on the back end, um, but it's going to make a page wherever we told this gathering block to go make pages, and, um, you know, Bob's your uncle, you've made a, uh, I think it's the second time I said that today, uh, I gotta stop that, <laughs> you've made a, a visual online community, um, ta-da. Am I forgetting anything about the gathering block, Andy? I don't think so. Yeah, I did a pretty good job covering that. Um, I'm sure I'm forgetting some stuff, but I feel like I've chatted for quite a while. Yeah, there's a ton of developer stuff that's not... Not going to be what we're talking about right here. We're talking about right now, but we'll probably put it in the post that we make announcing this when it's available for download. Yeah, so we're cleaning this up now and making sure that our styles are less funky. Why don't you jump over to the other demo? one and resize the tiles there because it's way more compelling when your CSS sheet isn't broken. No, it was working. Like, was, was it? Oh, yeah, it was like an edit mode kept giving me that like, drop down thing. The first click was one of those funky. Yeah. So, so if you get rid of that, there you go. When I resize one with it, there you go. The photos are cool. Um, yeah, so pretty neat. Uh, so what we're looking for, I think, is to start the discussions and get people playing with it and, um, you know, tell us how we're right and how we're wrong. Uh, we're looking for people to help with the single sign-on sources. We're looking for people to help with feeds for the gathering and templates yeah. for the gathering. Um, we're looking for anyone who wants to contribute. There's other stuff that we could certainly task out. We know there's a lot left for us to do. Uh, but we figured this is uh, um, more decided than undecided, and so it was uh, time to share. Absolutely. So why don't we go do some QA?